everyone welcome back to my channel I'm Carrie and this channel is all about Hawaii food and family and today my husband Reed's gonna show us how he steams his fish and for that we're gonna be using a red snapper so this morning we got started a little later and by the time we went to Whole Foods uh, they were all out of whole fish and so we were stuck so we ended up going to Chinatown and mm -hmm. luckily Old Faithful and we probably should have went there to begin with yes um, there there's a stall in Oahu market in Chinatown So we had to come to Chinatown to buy uh, white, our red fish for tonight because the Whole Foods didn't have any and luckily we found their last two snappers. We bought them up. They look to be about maybe one to two pounds each which are really small but that's okay. Uh, it'll be a nice dinner for us tonight and um, we're watching him clean them right now which is a really cool thing. Because of the, um, the size of the snapper that they had left, we ended up buying two. We thought, you know what, two, maybe two pound fish each. Um, so four, four pounds total is just enough to feed this whole family. To cook the fish, we're gonna be using my mom's old fish steamer. So uh, we, my mom bought it back in probably the 80s from a store that no longer exists in Waipahu called Arakawa's. And I think every Asian family that grew up in Hawaii around my generation, you probably grew up going to Arakawa's. And so this is an old style steamer where um, it actually has a rack built into it um, mm -hmm. that can be removed and uh, you can steam the fish in here. So what I did was I just put in a thin layer of water under the rack and we're currently heating it up and uh, we're about to throw in the first of two fish. And so the rule of thumb here for steaming is you wanna do it about 12 minutes per pound. So each fish is just about two pounds. So we're gonna be steaming each fish for around 24, 25 minutes. And um, I like to steam it until the eyeballs start turning white and popping out. And that's how you know it's a it's juicy fish, yeah. So just to ask a couple questions. So if you don't, so I know this is a red snapper, but what other kind of fish can you use for? You wanna use a white fish, fish, like opaka paka, ehu, right? Any type of red snapper will do uh, and, and can be steamed very nicely. The second question I have is, if you don't have a fish steamer, cause I don't think everyone has them at home, uh, what would what's another way that people can steam a fish? Well, if you don't have the steamer, so sorry for you. <laughs> wow. But if you don't have the steamer, there's several different ways. And I know her grandfather used to do it this way, where you mm -hmm. actually uh, cook it in a pan with oil, and yeah. you spoon the oil, the hot oil, onto the fish. Yes. That's one way to to cook the it's fish. Very old school. Yeah. Another way would be to just get any pot. It wouldn't turn out the way I think most Chinese families like it, where the fish is laid out and the fins are all intact. But you could. Um, contort the fish so it fits into a pot on a rack and you can steam it that way. Yeah. Um, ideally, you want to keep the fish whole because I think that's culturally Chinese style. We're not Chinese, but mm. sometimes I'm mistaken as Chinese. But it is local style. Like my grandparents grew up making red fish, if, yeah. especially for like New Year's and stuff. And they would put the somen noodles around yeah. it. They actually tell you that you have to have this fin sticking yes. up. Yes, if you ask my grandma, it's all about the it's fin like, sticking hello. up. So. Hello. Um, yeah, there's just, and I, I think Reed cooks this probably like a couple times every year. So he's really... Usually for this family. Yes, but he's really good at it. And also stay tuned because we are also um, going to eat dim sum. So you can join us as we venture into Chinatown again and we eat dim sum. Yeah. Anyway, with that long introduction, um, thank you for sticking around and let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add the fish and the water has steamed up. It's very, it's nice and hot. And so we'll put in fish number one into the pot and he fits in nicely. And so basically that's it. We're gonna just do that and cover it up and we're gonna time it for about 24 minutes. What we're gonna add in is some fresh chopped green onion, some fresh chopped cilantro, mm -hmm. some grated ginger and some chopped up garlic. And then on top of that, we're gonna be putting in shoyu and salt 
And then to top it off, we're gonna heat up peanut oil and we're gonna pour that on. And that's the fun part. Yeah, it makes a nice sizzle. Yeah, ASMR. <laughs> so we'll see you on the other side of this fish cooking. Okay, so the fish looks just about done. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it out and we're gonna transfer it over to our pan that Carrie prepped for us. So for this, I'm gonna need some pot holders. And we got the local kind pot holders. Typical, like the kind your grandma get. So make sure that you get those at home. Okay, then use the grandma kind pot holders and you take the fish out. Okay, so like I said, this fish steamer comes with a handy rack like this. So you can just pull the fish out and then basically the fish just slides off. There you go. And I was telling Carrie his fin's kind of already sticking up, so it's, it's good. Okay. So we'll leave him here, and then uh, we'll fill this up with a little bit more water, and then we'll start again. Okay, so here's the second fish. Ooh. Oh, it looks good. And it's interesting because when it, um, the wing comes up when it's cooked. It, I don't think it's called a wing. I mean, sorry, the fin, the fin, the yeah. fin comes up. Yeah, not the wing. Doesn't matter, you're gonna take it off. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to start by um, adding some seasoning to the fish. So we have wine salt. So we're gonna add in some wine salt. So next is the garlic. And we're just gonna lay it on top. It's, it's not important it gets into the fish. Ah, you put it on the fin. It's okay. Okay. So for the garlic, I cut about six cloves of garlic. Mm -hmm. So that's more than enough to cover both the fish. Then we have grated ginger, and for this, it's, I just grated um, one piece of ginger about this big. Hi, Grandma. Come. We're making a fish. Then um, now we're going to add in the cilantro. And for the cilantro... It's a nice smell that I Yeah, can we can be very generous with this. Mm -hmm. And those of you that were waiting for Dad to walk in the background, you are not disappointed. <laughs> You have fans, it's you funny, know. It's funny because we do fans. get comments about that. People are like, oh, we're waiting for your dad to walk in the background. <laughs> and lastly, the green onion. The green onions. So how did you learn this recipe, like, originally? So actually, my old co-worker and friend, Dan Oshita, taught me how to make fish this way. And we would go to his house after work and he'd um, whip this up in his, like, downstairs kitchen. And I thought, wow, that's so amazing that you made steamed fish like this and so easy. Mm. Yeah, this is a very simple recipe. It seems very like gourmet, but it's very simple. Yeah. Lastly, before we add in the hot oil, is we're going to be generous and just put some shoyu on. And for this, what I like to do is put enough where there creates like a shoyu layer underneath mm. the fish. All right, that looks good. Okay, now for this one, you're gonna want the sound up because we're gonna add in the hot oil. While we're doing this, we just like to remind you to check out uh, our podcast. And so our podcast episodes drop every Monday and you can find us at The Hawaii Couple. Mm -hmm. You can search us wherever you find your podcast that you listen to. And make sure you keep watching because we will be trying them some coming up. For this, we went ahead and heated up probably about half um, I'd say about three cups of peanut oil. I don't think it necessarily cooks the fish again, but what it does is I think it seals in a lot of the flavor. Mm. And we're done! Steam fish. Hi everyone, so today we are going to have dim sum. You want to kind of see where we are? When dim where sum. We're at. Dim sum. We're at the Chinese Cultural Plaza 
in downtown Honolulu and we're going to a restaurant called Legends, which is very legend. Dairy. Wait for it. Dairy. Oh my gosh. Legends opened in 1990, so it's been around for a while and they serve like a Cantonese style food. So uh, yeah, I want to take you along on our experience and I've never been here. So I, I think you've been here, right? I've been here many times. Many times. He's been here many yeah. times. All right, let's head on in. Seafood is okay. Seafood, yeah. Shanghai dumpling. Oh, no, no, that, not that one. Mm. Xiao Long Bao. What is that? Su, su dumpling. Shanghai dumpling. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we got um, fried shrimp, Shanghai dumpling, and shumai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I want the shumai very good. Tasty. You can taste the pork and mix in with some vegetables and some shrimp and with the hot mustard sauce, it's perfect. I'm gonna try the Shanghai dumpling. I don't know if I've ever had this one before. It's hot. Okay. It's very similar to the shumai. It's really good. Mm. Except it's from Shanghai. Except it's from Shanghai. This is delicious. It's nice because it comes out fresh and it's, it's nice and hot. We just ordered um, char siu bao, which is basically um, a little manapua with char siu inside, and then uh, chives and pork dumpling. Let's try this pork with chives. Mm. There's some peanuts in there, some walnuts. Oh, it's good. Or maybe chestnuts. It's, I think it's chestnuts. Very good. How was your first Legends experience? It's delicious. Um, all of the all of the dumplings are very very tasty, so I would definitely come back. It's fast. Yeah, I was like, I just told me to feel like we're in and out in 20 minutes. <laughs> The last thing that I'm trying today is the jindui and jindui is like mochi with ong paste inside, the red bean paste and then it has sesame seeds on the outside and it always has like a coconut flavor and I really like jindui, it's one of my favorite Chinese foods so. mm. Mm. Very good Sometimes the layer of mochi is really thin, but this one's like nice and thick, so it's very delicious. Great amount of sweetness. And the sesame seeds really add like that nice crunch at the end. Which is something that in the Japanese culture we don't even have the sesame seeds, but this is really good. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed watching how we make our steamed fish as well as going to Legends. Highly recommended if you want really ono dim sum 
in Chinatown. So go check that place out and we'll see you guys in the next one. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Bye.